Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today is day two of our 30-day SQL challenge. In day one, we talked about what SQL is, what is the meaning behind relational databases, and the difference between SQL and NoSQL. Now we can install the software we're going to need in order to execute our SQL queries. So let's look at the agenda for today. We're going to talk about why I chose SQLite Studio for this presentation. We're going to proceed to download it and then explore the interface of SQLite Studio. If you are new to the 30 day SQL challenge, welcome. The goal here is to work for 30 days, preferably straight. I know that it is hard being consistent, but you got this on learning beginner to intermediate SQL skills. We won't cover everything, but what we will cover is enough for you to pursue those entry-level data roles. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have the topic list, and this is just a document where I'm going to upload additional resources, videos, etc. If you don't want to refer to this list every day, hit the notification bell. Soon as a video pops up, you will be notified. And on the right hand side, we have a Facebook support group. It's Tech Data Careers for All. And in this support group, you're able to chat, to ask questions about the content for each day, to find a virtual buddy to code SQL with you or to network. So I'm gonna drop these links in the description below and I highly recommend that you check them out. So why SQLite Studio? So there's tons of SQL software that you can use. There's MySQL, Postgres, Microsoft SQL Server. You can actually do SQL in Python by importing a package in their SQLite Studio as well. No matter what interface you're using, at its core, SQL is SQL is SQL. It's if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Now, is the duck yellow or green? It really doesn't deter you from identifying that that is a duck. The same thing goes here. So if you know how to code in SQL, whether your job is using MySQL, Postgres, Microsoft SQL Server, you will be able to pick up those SQL programs just like that. So the reason why I chose SQLite Studio is because we do not need to set up a server. At times when working with MySQL, sometimes the installation can be a little frustrating because you have to download MySQL and you definitely can do SQL in the terminal. But if you want to have a graphical user interface, which allows us to visually see what we're doing, you would need MySQL Workbench. And so to avoid that confusion, I decided to download the graphical user interface SQLite Studio so we can see our databases, see the tables within the database, and see the output of our SQL queries. So it's pretty straightforward. It has good documentation. I love to stress the importance of documentation throughout this 30-day challenge because there's no way that you would know a package that comes out two months from now. The only way that you're going to know a model, a package, or anything that's new is if you read the good documentation. And if you know how to read documentation, anything new that comes out, you should be able to implement. So as I've already mentioned, if you know one SQL dialect, you can pick up another dialect easily. So don't worry about, oh, we're using SQLite in my SQL. You'll be able to pick, pick it up very fast. And SQLite is used for small databases. So we're not gonna use any big data here. However, big data is very prevalent in the industry. So a lot of industries are gonna use server-side database management systems where they're gonna have servers in the cloud that's hosting their data tables. And then you can connect remotely into the cloud and kind of pull down those real-time data from those tables, okay? All right, so now let's hop over to download. So I'm going to go to sqlitestudio.pl and this is going to be linked below. So make sure you're downloading SQLite Studio, not SQLite with the binary files, not SQLite with the source files, SQLite Studio. Because the studio, as you can see in this image here, is going to give you a nice graphical user interface where you can see what's in your tables, you can see your errors easily. So this is great for beginners. So you just wanna click that download and mine has an 
Apple next to it because I'm on a Mac. Yours may have a Windows system next to it if you're on a Windows, but either way, you want to download it. And my downloads always appears up at the top so you can see that I have downloaded SQLite Studio. Okay, so now since I've downloaded SQLite Studio, it is on my computer, so let me minimize that. And here I can double click on a Mac to open up this little driver that it created for me. And then I can double click on this to say install. And some of you might get this issue, okay? We cannot open it because the developer cannot be verified. So Apple tries to prevent you from opening up files that may be risky, but I do trust this file. So only do this if you absolutely trust the file that you're downloading. So I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm going to go into system preferences, security and privacy, and here it says SQLite installer was blocked from use because it was not identified. And I'm gonna hit open anyway. And when I do that, now I can click open and I'm able to actually open and download this file, okay? So if you're on a Mac and you get that warning, go to system preferences, security and privacy, general, and then you're able to bypass that. So I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna accept the agreement. I'm fine with it going into my applications folder on a Mac. You may want it to go into your desktop or documents folder on a Windows. It doesn't matter. Just remember where you downloaded it at. And now it's ready to install. So it completed. I'm going to leave the check to launch SQLite Studio now. So I'm going to hit finish. And this is exactly what I get here. So I get a nice little interface, all right, where this is the SQL editor where I can add some code here. And I'm just making the screen a little bit bigger by having my arrows down so I can make it just slightly bigger for me. Great. And over here, I've had some existing databases to download and it's given me an error. I'm just going to right click this and say remove these databases because you won't have these in there. OK, when you first download it. And now I can see that I have a database window. I have an actual SQL editor down here. It's gonna tell me the status is pretty small of what happens when it's executed. And then I can um, hover over these things to figure out what it does. So it lets me add a database, create a table for the database. If I lose my SQL editor, I can open the SQL editor up here. So kind of play around with these tools. If there's any window that dis disappears for any reason, you want to hit view and make sure that the window is actually checked, okay? Because sometimes you'll accidentally um, close out of the database window, like I'm going to do now. I can just go to view and hit databases, and it's going to pop back up. So if you lose a window, have no fear. All right, so we've downloaded this. So now let's get some data to kind of bring into here. And I'm going to bring my browser back up and I am going to first download what we call the Chinook database, okay? And so we're gonna start with this one first and we're going to add databases as we go. But as you can see in this database, and let me kind of zoom in a little bit so you can see, okay? This is a sample database that's all about music. So we have playlists, playlist track tables, tracks, artists, albums. And keep in mind that relationship um, diagrams are tables that have relationships between them, okay? So we have relationships between these tables, which is exactly what we want. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm actually gonna download the sample database. And when I do that, it's going to come in my downloads. So on a Windows, go to your file folder and look for downloads. On a Mac, it's probably going to pop up here. So I'm going to look at this. And as you double click, if I double click this folder, this .zip on a Mac, it is going to automatically unzip for me. For a Windows, if you click on a zip file, you might see extract all. 
and that will extract all of the files within your zip files. But I see that in my downloads, I have this Chinook database, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to go back into SQLite and I'm gonna hit this add a database. I also can go to database up at the top and add a database. And it's a SQLite 3 and I'm going to navigate to that file that I just downloaded. So it should be a .db file. That's what you're looking for. And I'm gonna hit select. And it's automatically going to give me the name that was in front of that .db file, which is Chinook. So I am going to keep the name the same and I want to keep it in configuration. So once I exit out SQLite Studio, I don't wanna keep uploading this data set. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now when I look at Chinook and I double click on it, I see all the tables. I have an albums table and I can see all the columns inside of that table. I have an artist table and so forth and so forth. So this allows me to visually see the breakdown of this database. I see that the database is Chinook and it's made up of 11 tables. So if I want to do a practice query here, and we'll get to this in the next video, I can say select everything, that's what that star means, from the name of this database, which is Chinook, and the name of the table that I want it to select from. And I'm just gonna say albums, okay? And here, once I have this query, I can run it, and I see my output at the bottom here, where I have, all of the rows that was in that albums table. And I can kind of see what is in the data, okay? So that is how you install SQLite Studio. Please take some time and actually go through um, the download. You're going to need it for the rest of the course. Please, please, please like, comment, and subscribe on this video. I can't continue to make free content without your support. I also have an Etsy shop that will be linked in the description below for all the data nerds who want data apparel. You also can buy me a coffee and feel free to connect on LinkedIn. Thank you all. And I look forward to day three. Bye-bye.